Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Megan Campbell and this is Making Stuff. So I know some of you may still be waiting on a follow-up video on the CNC machine that I got recently, but um, unfortunately I've been a little preoccupied with uh, other stuff. I have however spent uh, quite a bit of time getting to know the machine. I have also um, already made a number of projects on the CNC machine and um, so far I must say it's uh, working perfectly. In fact I'm actually sitting on a stool uh, which I made on the CNC. So that is all definitely something that I'm eager to share with you guys and I will most definitely be getting into that um, as soon as I get a chance. But before I do that there is a little project that I've been planning to do for quite some time and it is something to uh, help speed up my work flow um, when using this laser. Now I've had this laser for a couple of months already and for the most part everything works uh, perfectly well on this machine but there is one thing that this machine lacks uh, that makes it a lot harder to use and that is a height adjustable bed for the machine. Now my previous laser machine uh, was a whole lot smaller than this but it had a motorized adjustable bed which meant that I could uh, use the controller of the machine to um, raise and lower the bed in order to get my material uh, properly focused for the laser to cut and engrave it. Now I knew full well when I got this machine that it didn't have a motorized bed but I didn't really realize how much of a pain in the ass it was going to be. So let's take a closer look and I can try and explain uh, what my problems are and uh, how I'm planning to fix them. Please excuse the mess in there. As soon as I'm done recording this intro I'm definitely going to be cleaning this out. <laughs> Okay, so at the moment, the only adjustment I have is in this uh, laser head over here. If I loosen this uh, screw over here, I've got a little bit of adjustability there to fine tune my focus. But in order to get my material um, in the ballpark, I've had to basically cut a whole bunch of um, spaces like this and like this, all sorts of different heights so that I can uh, prop my material up onto that and at least get it in the nearby vicinity and then I can fine tune it um, with this adjustment. Now that's all good and well, but uh, one of the biggest problems that I have with this is because um, I don't have that much support. Usually I'm supporting it on the edges and one or two um, of these spaces in the middle. If I'm cutting out larger pieces, sometimes when some of the pieces uh, get cut free, um, as they fall out, some of the pieces stick up and um, those pieces get caught by the laser head uh, which ends up throwing my material around all over the place and even damaging some of the parts here. So I'm constantly having to uh, babysit the machine when it's cutting just to make sure that um, something bad doesn't happen. Now the idea I have to fix this is to create basically um, a frame out of uh, something light like aluminium tubing, square tubing or something and in each of the corners have a threaded rod and have another movable frame on top of that and then I have to figure out some kind of way to connect all of those threaded rods together so that when I adjust one of them all four of them turn at the same time uh, raising and lowering the bed. Now at the moment um, as you can see I have a really long uh, laser head on here uh, the machine did actually come with a much shorter one, uh, which is the one that I'm hoping to use. Because at the moment with this long laser head, I've basically only got this much space um, to work with. The only reason I'm still using this is because uh, with this one, I don't have to have such long spaces in order to cut the material that I usually cut. So as I said, I have been thinking about this project for quite a while, but I haven't really come up with a concrete plan just yet. About a month or two ago, I happened to find a company locally that sells lead screws um, pretty much the exact same lead screws that I have on my 3d printer and the plan was to use that for the corners and for the adjustment but unfortunately I couldn't get the lead screw nuts to go with it I could of course um, 3d print those nuts and uh, they would probably work fine as well but later on I started to realize that because of the pitch on those lead screws I might not have as much of a fine adjustment as I would have liked um, so I decided to just use a um, normal threaded rod um, uh, that way I also don't have to worry about um, the nuts. I also happened to purchase a, a bunch of pulleys from the same company but um, as luck would have it they have the pulleys but they don't have any of the pulley belts. Now obviously these are all things that I could um, purchase online but um, seeing as I live in Africa I'm going to end up paying more in transport than shipping 
than what the products are actually even worth. So I do have a TPU um, print filament, which is the flexible stuff. And I have seen that some people have uh, printed pulley belts out of TPU. Here are a couple of samples of the ones that I printed. Um, this first one that I printed, I printed um, upright like this uh, because I was worried that if I print it flat like this, that um, the print layer lines are running um, parallel with the teeth of the belt and I was worried that um, they might be able to tear off eventually. I printed one flat as well and it seems like this should be strong enough and I don't think that any of the teeth will break off, especially not under the light load that it's going to be put under. Now the other issue I had is obviously I'm going to need quite a long belt to be able to engage all of the threaded rods in this system. So the idea was to print a whole bunch of these and then see if I could perhaps glue them together. So I actually printed two or three of these and I purchased a couple of different types of um, super glue and CA glue and none of them seem to be strong enough to, um, to hold these together. Uh, if I just give them a bit of a pull, they break loose. So one of the next designs I had is actually this one over here. Um, so in the one end, I made a, a female type of part and on the other end, a male so that they could stick together. And then if I put them together with CA glue, perhaps um, that extra surface area would make it stronger. But um, being that this belt was so thin, I couldn't really get that uh, gap to print properly. So uh, that didn't work either. So eventually I redesigned it and I made the belt a whole lot thinner and fatter so that I could um, still use the same principle um, on each end so that I could slot them together. And this one seems to work okay. Um, slots in here nicely. Uh, it does make a bit of a bulge here in the middle where they connect. But uh, I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to glue these together. And uh, by my calculation, I'm probably going to have to print um, like 12 or 13 of these to be able to go um, all the way around. So with this setup, I'm obviously going to have to print my own pulleys as well, but uh, that's not a problem. But I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So obviously there's a good chance that this uh, plan might not work, but at least I have a plan to start with. So the next plan I have to come up with is how I'm going to connect all of these uh, square tubings together and how I'm going to get the threaded rods uh, mounted into them. So using Fusion 360, I came up with this, um, I suppose you could call it a corner bracket. And as you can see, it's uh, fairly basic. Each end can fit the square tubing. And then in the corner, I have a space for a bearing. In fact, I actually made the slot deep enough to fit two bearings. Hopefully that will make the threaded rod a little bit more stable so that it doesn't um, wiggle from side to side. And as you can see, I also have a couple of holes in each one of these um, arms so that when I put the square tubing over here, I can drill a hole into the square tubing and either tap some threads into here and put some uh, machine screws in there or perhaps even just a, a normal self-tapping screw should be fine. I am currently busy printing another three of these. I have the GoPro set up there to hopefully get a nice time lapse of these printing. According to Cura, it's going to take 11 hours to print, so I'm probably only going to be able to get these off the printer like tomorrow. Once that's done, I'm going to have to create another design similar to this, but instead of a spot for bearings over here, I'm going to have a spot for a 10 millimeter nut to match the 10 millimeter threaded rods um, that I'm going to have in each of the corners. So once that's done, I'll at least have the structure completed. So as you can probably tell, um, I'm going to be spending a lot of time waiting for 3D prints to finish. So in the meantime, I suppose I can get started um, at least cutting the materials and getting together all of the parts necessary to build this. Uh, that are not going to be 3D printed. So I feel like I've been speaking for almost half an hour already. So I'm going to shut up and get on with it.
I guess this part wasn't really necessary, but uh, some of these square tubings have been lying around my house close on four years now. So um, they were a little bit beat up and I thought um, I'd just clean them up a bit. So straight off the printer, these brackets were a little bit too big, so um, I had to file them down a bit just so that they could fit inside the square tubing.
Okay, so we got the basic structure um, done. I put everything together now just to uh, test how sturdy it is and uh, thankfully it seems like it is way sturdier than I thought it was going to be, um, which is obviously uh, really great. So the last thing we need to do to uh, get this buttoned up is to get the pulley and belt system designed and installed um, as well as some kind of tensioner system. So yesterday I finally finished printing um, all of the um, belt segments and last night I quickly designed um, this pulley I finished printing this morning and in hindsight I think I should have just printed the gear section by itself just so I could test the engagement of the gears with the belt um, because um, as it feels at the moment um, they're not meshing as nicely as I'd like them to so I'm going to break off one of the sides of this pulley so that I can just um, have a look inside to see um, how the gears are meshing and then I can go ahead and make some alterations to the design. As for the belts, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, I did do a test glue up of two of the pieces and uh, as you can see it seems strong enough. The joint doesn't look amazing as I mentioned before, um, it does uh, create a little bit of a bulge um, where the two pieces uh, meet up but uh, perhaps with an X-Acto knife or something I can just uh, fine tune that. So once I've fixed the design for this pulley and I've got them printed, then I'm going to come back and start uh, gluing all of these segments together so that I can get my belt finalized for assembly. So let's quickly take a closer look at how this pulley is meshing with the belt. Okay, I don't know if you can see that uh, that nicely. It looks like the spacing between the teeth seems to be okay. I think if I make these uh, teeth over here just a tiny bit thinner, um, that's also going to make the gap between them a little bit wider. And I think I will have uh, a lot better engagement then. So I'm quickly going to run upstairs, uh, redesign this, uh, get them printing, and then I'm going to come back and glue up all of these belt segments. Okay, so it took a couple of tries, but I eventually got it to work. Um, this is the first sample I printed. Um, I just printed this one to make sure that this uh, um, 45 degree chamfer on the inside would be able to print without support. And thankfully it works perfectly. Um, uh, in this specific one, I made the teeth a little bit thinner, hoping that um, that would get better engagement, but uh, it didn't seem to work. So I had to um, reduce the amount of teeth from 28 to 27 and um, in this sample that I printed um, it seems to work perfectly teeth engage perfectly obviously the belt's going to be uh, wrapped around here at a 90 degree angle and as you can see it's uh, engaging the belt perfectly so I currently have four of these printing um, it's going to look like this except it's going to have another rim on the other side the way it's going to be attached to the threaded rod is um, through a nut which is going to go in here and then I'll uh, put a couple of washers in, put this all the way down to the bottom and then lock it with another nut at the top. And that should be enough to keep it from uh, moving. So the next step is to start um, gluing together all of these belt segments. Okay, so I'm doing a test fit here. Um, I'm measuring on the outside of this bracket because that's roughly where the pulley is going to sit. Now I've got uh, 19 segments here and 19 segments seems to be just a little bit short and I think uh, adding 20 is just going to make it uh, way too long. Now I know that this filament, this TPU, is capable of stretching to fill that gap but um, I don't want to put too much pressure on these um, glue joints that are made. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, stretch this as far as I feel comfortable, measure this distance and then I'm just going to uh, print a new piece um, of that length. So see you in a bit. Okay, we got the belt. I must say I am pleasantly surprised at how well that turned out. 
I've also just finished the prints of the um, pulleys. All I need to do now is uh, pop some nuts in here and in order to get them installed, I'm gonna have to take this top part of the bed off first. So let me do that. So as you can see here, I laser cut a couple of spaces out of perspex because I wanted to tighten the pulley up against the bearing. But I noticed as soon as I put any pressure on the bearing, the bearing jammed up and didn't want to turn freely anymore. So um, I eventually scrapped that idea and decided to just uh, sandwich it uh, between two nuts. And that seemed to work okay. Okay guys, it looks like we're in the home stretch here. I've gone ahead and finished this tensioning mechanism. Um, as you can see, I gave it a lick of paint. Um, I've assembled all the components and it seems to be working fine. Now the beauty of this design is that because it's not permanent and it's not fixed, it means that I can put it in any position that I like. And if I decide that I want a little bit more tension or I want to spread the load of the tension around, I can always go ahead and make more of these. And that's exactly what I did. So I now have two of these tensioning mechanisms and I'm basically going to put one on each of the short corners and I'm going to try and put even tension on the belt from each side. Now I would be lying if I said I wasn't at least a little bit terrified that um, as soon as I go to put tension on this belt um, that one of these glue joints fails as soon as I go and make my first turn. In fact, I have pretty much been uh, mentally preparing myself for that outcome since last night. And at the end of the day, even if that is the case, um, I would still count this project as a success because the concept definitely works and mechanically it functions exactly how I planned it to. So if I do happen to break a belt, um, all I have to do is then just purchase a proper pulley belt and pulleys and I can just install those and uh, everything should be perfect. 
Now you'll see currently I do not yet have a adjustment knob. I was planning to 3D print a knob to go on there, but then I thought I may as well use the laser to cut an adjustment knob so that I can test this whole system and see how it works. So I've already drawn up a design for the knob. So as soon as we've got this whole thing set up, I'm going to put it in the machine and cut it out. Okay, moment of truth. I haven't made the belt extremely tight, but uh, let's give it a try. That is pretty satisfying. So let's get it in the machine and uh, cut out the knob. There we go, that's exactly what we want. The parts have been cut loose, but they're not all falling through. Look at that. Couldn't be more perfect than that. Okay, that'll be the knob. Let me quickly glue it together and uh, we can wrap this up. Okay guys, that brings us to the end. Um, I know this was another long project, a long video, but judging by the outcome, I would say a pretty successful one at least. I always feel like I need to apologize for making these videos so long, but for someone else who's trying to build something like this, I feel like the more information I can give, the more benefits it's gonna have for someone else in, um, in a similar situation. I really am trying to keep them as short as possible while also trying to uh, give as much information as I can. So all in all, I am extremely pleased with how this turned out. Um, is it perfect? No, but I really think that it has uh, good bones. And as I said before, if anything happens to fail, I'm pretty sure that because I built it myself, I should be able to repair it or even upgrade it myself without too many problems. The only problem I have so far is that I do occasionally get a little bit of slip in the belt, but I'm guessing that's because I'm still a little bit hesitant to uh, tighten the belt um, too much. I am, however, still going to order an actual pulley belt, and once I have that as a backup, I'll just push the tension as far as I can and um, see how long the belt lasts. Uh, who knows, this belt could actually last for the entire life of this machine, but I'm not about to put that to the test right now. So with all that said, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it informative, um, helpful or even entertaining. This upgrade is most definitely going to make my overall experience um, using the laser a much more positive one. And I'm really glad that I took the time to do it. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions regarding how I went about building this that wasn't uh, made clear in the video, or you have any suggestions on how I could make it better, 
Um, go ahead and drop that down in the comments below. And as always, till next time, keep making stuff.